you remember Flower, Journey, Pixel Junk? Well, Straight Lights is here to remind you of those games while kicking a ton of metaphysical ass. It's a bit of a tonal contrast going from spiritually healing an entire forest to kung fu fighting colossal monsters, but it works, mostly. Straight Lights isn't an easy game, but it's not unfair either. The developers have crafted something so pure and focused that it hits like a shot of vodka. It's either precisely what you're looking for and hits the spot, or it knocks you on your ass sputtering, but it never demands more of you than to simply engage with it on your own terms. It's not a big game either, but I still ended up having to play in bite-sized sessions because of just how immediate and intense the combat can get. The first tip of the hand this isn't your usual action platformer is the fact that before you can even punch an enemy, you need to learn to parry. And I don't mean parrying like in Jedi Fallen Order where you just hit the parry button in the vague vicinity of an attack and you're fine. Precision parrying is important because it's how you heal, provided you are using the right color. There are two different colors that you need to correspond with enemy attacks. If you fail to correspond, it just shrugs off the damage, no health. And you also need to make sure that those colors are corresponding because you're absorbing more energy from your opponent. While you can attack them, it's a lot riskier and can actually make it so you're open for not being able to parry an incoming attack. Take too much damage, and your health bar is even permanently shrunk for the rest of the given fight until you either win or die. Unlike a lot of games with parrying in them that involve, say, souls that may or may not be dark, Straight Lights instantly refreshes you the moment you want to fight. Each encounter is supposed to be this meaningful duel between you and an opponent, or two opponents if the game is really feeling brutal at the moment. Each enemy is super abstract, but instantly identifiable with specific patterns that are very well telegraphed. It's mechanically tight as a drum, though I feel like the purple corruption attack phases of bosses tend to drag on way longer than necessary. Like, imagine you're in a fight in Sekiro, only for the bosses to start doing a lethal breakdance on the other side of the arena that you can easily avoid, but it just keeps insisting on doing for some reason. It just didn't really add anything and distracts from the emphasis and flow of the parrying. I get why there are certain attacks that you can't block, but I feel like they should be a spice? not loads of salt just thrown on top of an already fairly intimidating fight. Besides your parry and punch, you can dodge, sprint, and unleash three special abilities. One of which is incredibly redundant because it's basically just a super punch. There's another that lets you earn health from all colors while parrying for a short time, which is fairly useful. And finally, the one that you should absolutely pick by the start of the game, a stun move that is just, oh my word, so useful. If an enemy is just proving too difficult, having the ability to just stun them for a few seconds so you can land a few hits is immensely game-changing. I had such an easier time once I I unlock this ability. On top of this, as you're running around and exploring, you're collecting an essence that grows your ability to absorb the other kinds of essence, the spiritual energy of your opponents, which makes fights faster and gives you an edge. Even with just like 10%, it is game changing. So just with a little bit of exploration and with the stun ability, it becomes that much more manageable. I kind of wish they had actually specifically made you unlock the stun ability from the start, but they leave it up to your interpretation, and I'm sure there are some people who will prefer to have the multi-parry, and yeah, I thought I was going to be one of them, but the stun just for me is much more useful overall. I was able to just handle regular parrying fairly fine. You do also get some more standard unlocks, like a little bit of extra health, another charge for your special abilities, but these are more just like standard upgrades with some counterattacks, but the one counterattack requires you to get a perfect string of counters of enemy attacks, which at that point you're already doing so well, you've already have siphoned that much energy that it feels kind of redundant. Regardless, all of this is perfectly fine, works great, and I really love it. There's also a narrative reason for why you're parrying instead of attacking all the time. You're mostly fighting either scared or confused creatures like yourself, trying to bring them back down to Earth. Think if DBZ fights were intensive emotional therapy. Despite the lack of spoken dialogue, it's not hard to put together that nature is out of balance, and you yourself and your essence are out of balance, and you need to fix that with your various siblings. That's what the achievements call them. It's absolutely a world worth saving with some stunningly gorgeous locales and it looked like just mm, really, really good. No frame rate hitches or anything. 
That said, I did have one hard crash that caused a reboot, gobbling up some footage of a boss with a tragic childlike air to them, but otherwise, Straight Lights runs outstandingly well on PC. And for those wondering, yes, you can also pick it up on consoles. The only real caveats besides the steeper learning curve is that the soundscape and score are just kind of okay, they're fine, but they're not really outstanding. Plus, really important trigger warning here, there's a big arachnophobia moment where a character themselves is grappling with their arachnophobia. You do not have to fight any spiders in this scene, you just see them, but it is substantial enough to warn if that's an issue for you. As for the whole soundscape situation, despite literally having Journey's composer on board, I just felt compelled to put on my own music to keep myself more engaged. It's not that the sound design or music is bad, but it really does sound like stuff that was made for like Flower or Journey, as opposed to something that can dive straight into epic action. It, it's not bad, it's just, it really does kind of feel like it's outside the composer's wheelhouse a bit more, and like just something a little bit more impactful could have really helped. You know, something like something like the music in, say, Banner Saga. I could see something like that maybe having just a little bit more punch. But regardless, it's still a really nice soundscape. It's just, it doesn't feel like it's quite as cohesive as the rest of the project. Regardless, Straight Lights is a tight, bite-sized adventure that for the right player is going to be their dream game. Some might have a rough start, but if you like what you see, stick with it. There's some wild sights to see and nothing quite like this. This is the sort of game that people who remember the old days on PSN and XPLA where indies were this brand new thing and anything could happen, but with this wonderful knife's edge focus of here's our gimmick, this is what we're all about, as opposed to nowadays where everything is a freaking Metroidvania with prolonged grinding Souls-like elements and probably some kind of, I don't know, Dance Dance Revolution minigame grafted in halfway through for some reason. This is purely interested in just doing what it does well, no fluff or any kind of cliches strapped on top. If you miss those kinds of games and are tired of trawling Ichio to find those kinds of games, this is for you. It's a journey worth taking for patient, methodical action fans.